Welcome everyone to my Portsmouth. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you want to learn all there is to know about Portsmouth and that's what I'm going to try and do for you today. First of all, you need a little background and let's start with why people came here. They came for the lumber, they came for the, the deep ocean area that we had, the fish that were there. They came for a number of things. Now, King George III was the person that sent most of these original uh, people over, and he wanted to know just what was here and was it worth, <laughs> imagine that, was it worth settling? Well, he found out big time. We had all the lumber, we had the fish, we had the currents on this river, the Piscataqua River, which runs through Portsmouth. So he could get ships in here, he could get his goods in here. This was a place to come. But he had other things on his mind. So it wasn't until 1623 that the first settlers came. They came and the first settlement was actually out there at Ordeon Point. But you know, um, at that time, it was considered part of this land, part of what we now call Portsmouth. Do you know it was originally called Strawberry Bank? Because along the banks of this river, wild strawberries grew. Oh, I wish they did today, don't you? Well, needless to say, people came. They came for all these good things. We were quite a thriving port. And this is what we've become today, a place where people want to visit. They come for the restaurants that we have in town. They come for the cultural things that we have in town. And I'll tell you all about these in just a little bit. I guess the thing we have to do now is find you a place to stay. Everything you need to know about where to stay is in this little book, The Harbor Guide. You can pick one up at the chamber office as you come in on exit 7, or you can pick one up right in the heart of town, right at the kiosk that we have in, the, in Market Square. So here we begin. We have hotels. We have large hotels. We have inns, quaint little inns. We have B&Bs. We have it all right here in the town. It depends. We have them from all price ranges too. So my only caution to you is make your reservations early. We're a busy town in season and people love coming to Portsmouth. Alrighty, now you found a place to stay. We have to decide what next do you want to do. We have so many things for you to do here in town. Of course, you have the restaurants. We have the best north of Boston. You know that. You know, I used to live in Massachusetts and I used to think that if you were celebrating a special occasion, you had to go to Boston. I mean, that's where it all was. Not anymore. I moved up to New Hampshire and I discovered I don't have to leave my town. This is where it is. We have some of the best chefs, James Beard rated chefs, prime people, really, really good. And the best part about it is we have them from paper nappery and plastic cutlery to silverware and damask tape napkins. So that's the thing we have here. We have them all. We have uh, your burger joints. We have pizza parlors. We have gourmet steak houses. We have fish. Oh my heavens, do we have fish probably the best around. I mean, I could name names, but you really have to come and see for yourself and you have to taste for yourself too. That's the important thing to do. Now, again, I'm going to point out my little book here. Don't leave the hotel without it. What you have in here is a listing of all the hotels, all of the eateries, and it will tell you whether it's fine dining, it will tell you whether it's handicap accessible. All of these things are in this little book. And guess what? The book is free of charge. All you have to do is pick one up. 
we're happy to give it to you. The other thing I want you to know is that one of the no local newspaper took a survey one time and they asked all of the restaurants in town to send them the number of, of the seating capacity that they had in their restaurant. And when they finished, they discovered that if every person that lives, every resident of Portsmouth, wanted to go out to eat on the same evening, and they all had different restaurants that they were going to, they would all have a seat and some left over. That's how many restaurants we have with, no, that's how many seats we have here in town in our restaurants. But a word of warning to you, because I've told you that, don't think that, oh, I can get a place anywhere. I can make a res, I don't have to make a reservation. I can just go. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. You really do need a reservation, especially if you're looking to go, you know, to one of the higher end dining places because people tend to sit for a while at those and you just can't walk in. That's not going to happen. So keep that in mind when you come, okay? We are going to talk about what you can do once you get into your beautiful hotel room. After you decide which of these marvelous restaurants you want to go to, there's so much here, we really need to go into depth on this one. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you have a pair of comfortable shoes. That is definite. We, it's a necessity here in town because everything is within walking distance. Parking is pretty hard to come by, I have to admit, in Portsmouth, other than the uh, lots, of course, and that is, by, by the way, the safest place to stay. If you're staying somewhere that doesn't have parking, I would suggest the lots because in town we have very, very um, ambitious parking attendants and you will get a ticket and I don't want that to happen. I don't want your experience here in Portsmouth to be a bad one. So get those shoes on and let's start walking. The first place you might want to go to is to Strawberry Bank. I don't know if you've heard of it, but those of us in town really feel this is the gem of Portsmouth as far as cultural history. This is the place where you come and you learn about the beginnings. 40 acres of homes that are original to that piece of land and many others that have been moved from places in town that were set for demolition. They were taken here to Strawberry Bank and we have a wonderful, wonderful person here in town. She's passed away now, but she was the town librarian. Her name was Dorothy Vaughn. That's, that's who she was. She came and she said to people in town, the selectmen, the business people, we're selling our history because in those days they were tearing down historic homes to build new and what they call modern buildings. She went before them and she said, look, we have history right here. It's important that we keep it. And so they took her, her words, at, to, they took her words at their value and they created Strawberry Bank. That was money from the government, from the federal government. It cited that you had to have educational, an educational purpose for this money. And there it is. People come, school groups come. During old, during the month of June, normally the buses are in there lined up and children are learning about the early history of Strawberry Bank and of Portsmouth itself. And then of course they can walk right across the street and see an All-American Select Garden. Now an All-American Select Garden is one of those gardens where special flowers are grown. They call it that because they, they test flowers. They test them. Years ago, you see, we had these petunias. If we had a heavy rainstorm, by golly, those petunias were wiped out in one day. Now, of course, they tested them. We have a wave petunia. And it's hardy, it withstands storms, it withstands winds, and of course, we have those in Portsmouth. And it's just wonderful. And this is what they do at this garden. 
Also in this area, we have behind me a gundalo. Now a gundalo was the workhorse of the Piscataqua River. It was a boat that could go into any narrow area. It could bring supplies and that's what we needed to happen. Supplies were available. Coming in, they would come down the river and bring them to certain areas that, where they were most needed, especially inland because if you were to look at Strawberry Bank and the park that we're in now, you would find that there were little fingers of water that came right across into those areas from the Piscataqua River. We can't dig holes too deeply over here for the simple reason that we, we'd hit water right away. So all of this has been built up. But in those days, the gundalo could go in those narrow areas and deliver uh, building materials. So this is right behind me. Before we head downtown where some other activities are going on, I just want to mention that those buildings you see across the river are part of the Portsmouth Naval Yard, one of the oldest Navy yards in the country, incorporated in 1800. And it is one of those places during World War II that was running 24 seven. And it turned out on January 24, 1944, four submarines. It put four submarines into the water on one day, a record that hasn't been beaten. Now we're going to head downtown where you can see so many more at, um, places to visit and things to do. So let's head on down the well. By the magic of technology, here we are in Market Square. We've left the uh, south end of, of town and here we are in the center where it all happens. I'm standing in front of the Old North Church, as you can see, and you notice there are some famous names on here. George Washington was a person, a president who worshipped here. The top one, some of you might not know, this was William Whipple, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence from New Hampshire. And then we have John Langdon, who was president of the Senate. And he was the person that told George Washington that he had been elected president of this country. So he was, a, he was a governor, a three-time governor of this state. He was a member of the, of the Senate. He was the president of the Senate. He, all these historical people. And I know a lot of people think of Daniel Webster as a uh, Massachusetts patriot, and yes, he was. But he lived here in Portsmouth for about a dozen years. His law office was right here in downtown Portsmouth and he was quite a person who was all for liberty and the things that mattered to the people of New Hampshire while he was here. And then of course we have George Washington, as I mentioned before. When he was elected president, he made a, a, an historic trip to all the towns that had people that had, that had voted for him and had helped him during the Revolutionary War. He wanted to say thank you, and Portsmouth was one of those stops. Now, we're going to pan around and see what else there is here in downtown Portsmouth for you to see. This church is available for going in. You can actually, if you want, you can on certain times climb up into the belfry of the church. You just have to make reservations um, at their rectory. And if we look across the other side of town and we pan around, you can see we have wonderful, wonderful places to come and sit down and have coffee. People come down, they bring their laptops, they work down here, and if you look very, very closely, you will undoubtedly see a little dog dish in the front of all these places filled with nice, cool New Hampshire water. We are across the street from the North Church now, and we're in front of one of the oldest Athenaeums in the country. Now, an Athenaeum, as you know, is just a private library. This one happens to specialize in Portsmouth history and maritime history. The canon that you see in front of the library 
these cannons were put here by a generous donor who had been gutting a house and they found them in their, in their cellar, attic, wherever, I'm not quite sure, but they donated them to the library. Now, um, as a former librarian myself, I find myself thinking that perhaps the librarian either didn't have room for them inside, or he had a very, very good sense of humor, and he put them outside here. They tell you that um, they were captured at the Battle of look at it, by Commodore Perry. And there you have a little look, see it up close at the Battle of Lake Erie. And aren't we lucky that we have them here in, in front of the, um, the Athenaeum. The other thing too, you'll notice the plaques up here, and those plaques tell you that the Athenaeum was founded in 1817. And before that, this particular building was a fire and marine insurance company. And we're hearing bells from the North Church as we go. Every hour this happens, so enjoy. And we're getting a long bell concert here, aren't we? Our bell concert is over. We can resume with the fact that this building is made of brick. But you know, Portsmouth was a wooden city. Portsmouth was, this is what the king came for, the lumber, remember? So we were a wooden town. We had three disastrous fires, one in 02, 1802, 1803, and 1813. In 11 short years, this city was leveled to the ground because it was a wooden city. And so the legislature passed a law in 1814 called the Brick Act. And that is why you see so much brick here in town now. But try as you go through the city, try and think of it as a wooden city. Try and picture this. It will bring you right back into the feeling that existed here in those early days. Yes, if I didn't tell you about the good shopping that we have here in town, this is probably more for the ladies that come to visit. But gentlemen, right across the street, we have a tobacco shop. And we also have other shops in town where you can go in, sit down, and have a libation if you wish. I think that might be a good idea. But right now, ladies, these are all unique shops. We have a mall. It's about two miles out of town. Wonderful things, I'm sure. But when you come to Portsmouth and you do your shopping here, you're going to see things that are unique, not one in every single size and every single color. So do take advantage of the good shopping that we have here. Oh, and remember, if you're from out of state, we don't have a sales tax here in Portsmouth. So when you look at a price tag, that's what you're going to pay. For people, we're on Market Square right now, but we have State Street and we have Pleasant Street and we have Congress Street, we have Daniel, we have so many. All of these streets are emanating right from the center of town. So you can just play, well, I guess you can play Russian roulette and just pick each street of each day, pick a different street and see what they have to offer. I'm sure you'll have fun no matter what you decide to do. I also know you'll have the greatest meal. You'll want to come back, trust me, often. Alrighty now, if you've forgotten some of the information I've given you, all you have to do is go to goportsmithnh.com. They have everything you need to know about Portsmouth. And don't be, don't be, don't forget to pick up a Portsmouth guy on your way into town. And if you do, you have a second chance, remember, at the kiosk right in Market Square. Have a great day. Enjoy your visit to Portsmouth.